<laughs> Listen, uh, welcome to <laughs> welcome to the Daily Live X. I was laughing because Ned just told Cam to prepare for something to come on the screen, and it was a black screen. Uh, so whatever he was trying didn't work. Uh, anyway, I'm joined by Cam in the studio today, but a little bit late. Blaming Ned. Um, yeah, Morgan Gibbs White is the latest name mm. to be banned. I mean, it's, it's been bouncing around for a few days, obviously, but. We thought today, because there's as much other news, we'll uh, we'll have a little chat about Morgan Gibbs White. But first of all, how are you? I'm not bad, mate. I'm not bad. I'm how getting there. I'm... How are you finding this summer? <laughs> it's 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 not bad, is it? It's a bit, mm. been a bit mad. Like to be fair, the hottest days I've been stuck in work, and then yeah. the days where it's been raining, I've been not in work. So it's been great so far. But I just can't wait to get on that plane next week, mate. To be honest <laughs> with you, not that I'm prepared in any way, shape, or form, no. like. But no. that's for. That's for, that's for, ne- that's yeah, for, Thursday for next week. Um, what have you, what have you made of of Everton's summer? Obviously like losing the Charleston, big dunk going as well. Um, Expected, and obviously you're, you know, you're the one you wanted to stay is gone there, uh, Fabian Delft. <laughs> oh yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> devastated me. Yeah. What, what have you made of it so far? I uh, sort of nothing that I didn't expect. Nice, really, yeah. um, I think we sort of knew come the end of last season that one of the three was going to leave and you sort of you took Dominic Calvert-Lewin out of that because of his season last season and the fact that there wasn't as much sort of stock behind him and as much interest behind him so it became quite apparent quite clear that it was likely going to be Richarlison who'd bring in the most money mm. um, I'm sort of I'm not happy but I'm 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 on one hand sort of glad that it was done early and we're not sitting yeah, here yeah, through yeah. four, five, six weeks of summer knowing that he's going to leave and waiting to sell him three weeks into pre-season, a week before the season starts. So I'm happy that it got done and dusted and now we can put it behind us and look forward on obviously bringing in replacements and spending that money on improving the squad because it vastly, vastly needs improving. But it is, it's it's devastating, isn't it, when you lose somebody that you know gave so much last season. And certainly towards the end of the season, you've seen the way he played and celebrated goals and scored some important goals himself towards the back end of the season as well. It's it leaves the question as to well if we barely survived last season with him in there, then we've got some serious recruitment to do to uh, to replace that to be to be even just safe next season. Uh, and obviously history tells you that Everton and recruitment doesn't really go a good recruitment doesn't really go in the same sentence. So yeah, a bit sort of. I don't know, a, a little bit worried, I suppose, but I'm happy that we've got weeks to sort it out. And, and as I've said before, mate, this this can't go wrong. We cannot we cannot afford another summer of dreadful recruitment. We cannot afford another player that we bring in for big money who doesn't work and then is here for four years on massive wages. We've we've got to get this right. We've got to replace everything that Richarlison brings, not just as a footballer, but as a personality in the, the dressing room as well. You, you could see the pitches yesterday. He's clearly you know, going to be missed throughout the um, squad. And we'll probably be an Everton player in the next couple of years, as per Stephen Pina. So <laughs> we'll wait and see on that one. But Dunk leaving as well was was a bit of a shock because although it was sort of, <clears throat> you know, it was toyed about when Lampard got the job, obviously as to where that leaves Duncan Ferguson, um, you know, and whether or not he was going to go and pursue that managerial career. And I suppose if he wants to be the Everton manager in the future, that was always an inevitability. If he was going to get it without that experience, it would have been January. He'd have got it. So. Mm. Um, it was almost like a, it was a shock, but not a shock at the, at the same time, because obviously there was no talk about it, there was no rumours, it just sort of happened, but obviously wishing Dunk the very best of luck, and I'm sure over the next few years, you know, we'll see him we'll see him back at Everton if he goes, I don't know, the Championship, or um, maybe over in Scotland, Europe, and, and as a success, then obviously that, that lines up nicely it. for him to be, I say him to be a replacement as Everton manager, but the hope is that Frank Lampard is here for the next 10, 15 years, because <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, done that good well. enough a job, so, mm. you know, I don't really want to be sitting here saying, oh, I hope Dunk's the manager in five years, because I hope Frank Lampard's the manager in five yeah, years, because yeah. that'll have told that he's done a, a great job, so, it's just Everton, we'll isn't it? We never get a break, do we? We'll the the new kit's you. nice, I suppose, well, there and you the go. training gear's nice, so, so there's the positive. we don't get a break, do we? We finished last season, and within three days, Angelotti left, and then we had the maddest summer ever, so... Do we really expect us to have Any a difference. summer where we just go, oh, yeah, it's been all right. There has been mad, obviously, just to take over stuff. As yeah, well yeah. All that. But it, 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 we'll just have to wait and see, obviously. The, <coughs> yeah, it's, it is what it is, isn't it? Um, you know, good luck to Dunk, like we've said. Good luck to it. Well, no, I don't want to wish it's Alison good luck. <laughs> you know? You just um, know 10 minutes into the into the game at Goodison, 
he'll be hated. Because <laughs> he's the type of player that he's not going to hide his emotion, no. is he? You're going no. with a rough challenge, he'll or you're getting in someone's score, faces, he'll celebrate and score. And it'll be like Arteta again after. And that might work in our favour. Because the crowd will get behind it, the crowd mm-hmm. will get on him, our tackle goes in on him, and that'll, so... Tracky. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is, exactly. And often, I remember Arteta was loved for years, and then, you know, Barkley and Baines got in his face, and all of a sudden it riled everybody up, and, you know, we won what was a really important game, so... Um, <laughs> yeah. Dave Witt says 24 hours be shaping up for the Toffee TV <coughs> tonight. So we will. You're there tomorrow, you're there tomorrow. I am there tomorrow, yeah, of course I'm there. Yeah, that's right. uh, in some Cl- form. Yeah, you'll be there at some stage. Ian Clark says, uh, yes, Boris has gone. Sorry to politicise <laughs> for a sec, but it's worthy of a celebration. Um, Nathan Hamlin says, are we mad for not jumping on Corne <laughs> or Dennis already? Should we have a clear plan? Should we have a clear plan and get them in early? Well, I'm quite sure there is a clear plan. Yeah. I think we hope. <laughs> we've got it. We have got it. That, I mean, there has been a little bit of this, and I, I, I'm going to disagree with you slightly on, obviously last season, and, and that means we'll struggle this season because I think there was a lot of stuff went on last season that I don't think will go on this season. So I think we'll be in a better place. That necessarily doesn't necessarily mean, yeah, we're going to be amazing because I don't think we are. But if they've got a plan, just because the press have put stuff out about Emmanuel Dennis and and this that and the other, it doesn't necessarily mean. Everton were that far down the road at the moment. No, Dennis. exactly. Yeah. Well, they? at the end of the day, you've got a star player from one team that's been relegated and a star <laughs> player from another team that's been relegated mm. being linked with a team that very nearly you know, <laughs> were relegated. <laughs> so it makes sense for the press to, to make those links. And look, I, I was really impressed with Dennis towards the back end of last season. And, you know, uh, he'd be a player I'd welcome at Everton. I think he'd be exciting. Um, obviously, he's got that sort of richarlison esque link of coming from Watford and mm. needing to come in and, and, and do a job. But... At the end of the day, there's, there'll be various other players out there that can come in and do those jobs that will probably cost us a little bit less because they haven't got the name, the Premier League name. I like Corne as well. I wasn't. I watched them a couple of times last season. I wasn't massively impressed, but I think overall he's he's a good player. But what what are we looking at if we to bring both of them in? What 40, 40 50 million, yeah. something like that? Yeah. So the club might be looking at a gun where we can bring one player in that does similar job to both of those for an awful lot less money so and younger maybe it's easy to go well, why aren't we going after Dennis why aren't we going after Dennis but we might be going after somebody that is equally as good and will cost us a lot less or you know we, we don't know Dennis might be in those conversations we know there was links with Brozier the other day as well so it's just a, a wait and see game I mean, it, at the moment. sometimes the other club is like <coughs> give us a few days while we, we think about it exactly you know, worry. I know they want well, for the, the Dennis thing slightly different because there's, there's Ishmael Saar as well yeah. who, mm. who was there and, and Watford are looking to get rid of them too because obviously the high earners mm. for them trying to reduce it and <coughs> neither of them probably want to stay so that's, that's that decision you make but it depends Probably. who's talking to who doesn't it, you know, that's we'll it. just pay the money we'll, we'll by just paying the money we're here, we'll, we're here. We're here. Exactly. so I think sometimes the club <coughs> do have to go Mm, nah, yeah, we're not paying, we're not that. paying Sorry, that. Sorry, we we don't think he's worth it. We'll move on. Yeah. There's a lot of footballers in the world who, who would it. improve Everton who aren't playing at big clubs and aren't on huge raises. So I think we do have to be. You've got to be careful, careful, haven't you? Because the, the reason we're in this situation is because we haven't been careful. Because mm. we've gone, oh, we'll just pay that forty million or twenty five million or thirty million, and now and a hundred grand, a hundred grand a week, two hundred five year, six year contract, mm. and now we're sitting here thinking, well, we've had to sell our arguably our best player certainly one of our best players to fund improvements in the squad because of the past five years of going, ah, just pay that, just pay yeah, this, just pay absolutely. that. So, uh, Morgan Gibbs-White, we've, we've obviously put him on the, the title because Everton uh, in the race with uh, Palace and Forrest. Um, Palace doing some good business. I was going to say, Palace have done some good recruitment recently. Some good, I mean, Decore, someone we should have got, to be fair, but hey-ho. Um, 22 years of age, under twenty plays in England under twenty ones. Um it's a bit mad. <laughs> Anthony Gordon obviously had a good season at Sheffield United last season on loan. He's not I've seen I've seen a few people and I've spoken to a, a couple of people as well who were like he's good, but he's not you that know, good. He's not like mm. what you'd want Everton to be buying, like to get Everton higher up. But I guess the flip side to that is We've bemoaned not having people who are a certain level mm-hmm. who, who keep <coughs> your levels up. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yes, he's not Musa Diaby. Love him, but he's 50 million plus at yeah. Leverkusen. I mean, we should have got him the 196 times we've watched him <laughs> and could have got him much cheaper, but that's Everton. But 
if he's someone who comes in and you go see him there every week, he's a six, seven yeah. out of ten. Just seven out of ten every week. Don't have to worry about him. He's not a don't think oh he's nine this week and next week he's one. We need it's more of that, don't yeah. we? We need more plays where you can go, <coughs> he'll do that for me. He'll do that. He's twenty two, he's athletic, can run with the ball. I for goal, obviously, last season, twelve goals and ten assists. That's much better than exactly, anything we exactly. have. So even if you knocked a third off that because of the Premier League quality is a bit better, and you're talking, what, eight eight goals and well, that's will be wrecked, there's six <laughs> assists or something like that, Still, we'd be delighted yeah. with that, wouldn't yeah. we? So, because we, we, this team camp simply hasn't got enough goals in it, and nope. we've just taken 15 the goals out of it, 15 goals out of yeah. it from, from goals and assists from the Charleston. So is this <laughs> the type, if it's not necessarily Morgan Gibbs-White, is this the type of player Everton should be trying to bring in yeah I think he's the profile of player Everton should be bringing in obviously there'll be a lot of different variables that go into it price and stuff like that Wolves being a Premier League team will probably want to get rid for a considerable amount of money but you said there about players that are 7s out of 10 consistently week in week out Is it's so so important because how many players have we got in this squad that one week you'll watch and think oh he was excellent today he was unbeatable and the next week you're watching they look like in, Sunday league off, players they? exactly you can literally list them off and that's why you know, we're, we've been so inconsistent over recent years and, you know, we haven't been able to keep a stable um, position or, or, or situation. So if Gibbs White could come in or somebody off that profile and provide that, you know, you're not going to be sitting there going, oh, he's the best footballer in the world, but you know what you're getting from him and you're getting the same thing every week. It's consistency and you can, and if builds trust within the manager, then you can build around that because you know what you're getting out of it. It's not like the manager's looking going, what? What am I going to get this weekend? Am I going to get the 10 out of 10 or am I going to get a 1 out of 10? Because mm -hmm. you're getting a 1 out of 10 within 15 minutes, the game could be lost. Look oh, at Michael yeah. Keane. Yeah. If Michael Keane has a stinker, we could be 3 0 down in 15 minutes and that's mm -hmm. it. But sometimes he has games where you look and you go, what? You're, you're three billion today. So, yeah, it's the, it's the type of profile. The goals and assists obviously are massively um, perky your ears up when you, when you hear those numbers. Yeah, like, yeah, all right, yeah. being in the championship. But how long have we said that we need to go and look at players in the championship? And, yeah. you know, the, some of our best players in recent years have come from the lower leagues, have come from the championship and have come up and made that step up and been absolutely brilliant. So, obviously, latest being Ben Godfrey coming from the championship. And, yeah. OK, had a bit of a rocky season last season because he started it with COVID. But the season before, he was absolutely excellent. He made the... <coughs> He made the um, he made the step up. So got in the England squad. Got in the England squad as well. So uh, again, uh, it's it's the type of player. He's the profile of player. The goals and assists, obviously, it, it would be a jump up. So it would it would it would be interesting to see how well he would do in the Premier League. But he's score big, for he's Wolves physical. in the Premier League. Score for Wolves, yeah. Mm. He's in and around that squad with Anthony Gordon, that England squad as well. Mm. So it's de he's definitely the profile. I think the price is a big thing for me. You know, these these are the types of players that usually teams are wanting 30, 35 million for because they're young, potential, especially off the back of a fantastic season last season in the Championship. Mm. It's it's all sort of lined up for Wolves to go, well, we want as much money well, as we can possibly million get for them. Around. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money still. It's a lot of money for ultimately a, a risk, but everything in football is a risk, I suppose, and mm. it's one of them if you sign him for 25 and he comes in and gets, let's say he matches it and gets 10 goals and however many assists in the Premier League you're looking going that's unbelievable because we, you're right we've got no goals you, you take Richarlison out this team now ultimately um, <clears throat> ok Dom had a, a one off shall we say season with injury mm. no guarantee that he'll be as good as he was the season prior next no, season no. so where else have we got goals coming from Damari Gray started like a house on fire and ended like an house off fire mm. Andros Townsend got a ridiculously tough injury towards the end of the season, but he started the season well. And then you look elsewhere and there's nothing. Goals. We've got nothing. Gordon got a, a fair few, but I think 90% of them took massive deflections, yeah, yeah. which is fine because he's taking the shots and he's having the efforts. But the midfield, is there's nothing. Yeah. The fence, there's barely anything. So it's we, we're already struggling for goals and we've just taken our goal scorer out and, and sold them. So... We need, not only do we need to replace Richarlison's goals in terms of going forward, but for me, you need a midfielder in there that's getting six, eight to eight to ten goals a season comfortably. And we, we just haven't got any of them. So, yeah, he's, he's the profile. The price would be something I'd, I'd be watching because I think Wolves will, will want a lot for him. But he's definitely he's definitely of that sort of profile of player that we should be looking at. For. Better than 29, 30-year-old players that were oh, good God. 10 years ago and now... Yeah, I'm very good. Without a shot, I mean, look at look at David Moyes. It's just so it looks like 
they complete in the signing of Flynn Downs, who <coughs> he played for mm-hmm. Swansea. He's very good. Who Everton could have done the job for Everton. Twenty three, good, good on the ball, busy. Out the championship, David Moyes, you know, yeah. Jared Bowen, he took has been excellent for him. He done <laughs> a bit of us, didn't he? We yeah. had Lescott and Kale, Kale and mm-hmm. people like Mark, even Marcus Bent done a job, and you know, absolutely Leighton Baines, mm-hmm. absolutely fantastic signings across Moyes' thing. And that's Everton did move away from that, moved away from players who you looked at and were. Would, if Everton would have been, <coughs> would have carried on in that vein, <coughs> even with the money. And, and continue that thread going yeah. through of like he's excellent in the championship let's get him in but let's take him as well yeah, the and, name. and twin track it we'd be in a far better yeah, place instead of just going who, and this is the owner <laughs> this is on the owner by the way you know who's whispering in me here yeah. oh what oh yeah let's go and get this fella oh yeah let's get let's bid against ourselves for a guilty Sigurdsson even though <laughs> you know Le- Leicester pulled out at 25 million I went no nah, that's enough <laughs> and we and we, pl- we paid 45 <laughs> You know, Leicester pulled out and we'll have that James Madison kid. We'll take a gamble on him yeah. and he's been good for them. We could have had him. Kid wanted to come to Everton. And we Walsh was like but the owner was going. Yeah. I mean we did the fact is we didn't need tickets. No. We already no. had we had fifteen number ten. We just didn't yeah. need them. And we gotta le- we gotta learn our, learn from our mistakes. That's that's the worry, isn't it? Is whether we will learn from our mistakes. But ultimately. don't we have to don't we have to you're right. And listen, ultimately we we're all burnt, aren't we? Yeah. By Everton, we know we are, and I'm I'm sat here, you know, grey air trying to <laughs> trying to tell people that. That wasn't great before. They, no, no, the, that, <laughs> two seasons ago. <laughs> Former Sherry coming, you know, um, <coughs> and and I'm trying to be upbeat because I think you should always start from, yeah, from a position of zero every yeah. summer and go right, and especially when we've got new new people who are who are trying to take over yeah. the control. Because let's you know, Frank Lampard came in on. Dead, literally deadline yeah. day he was announced, which is yeah. berserk in itself, isn't it? Madness. Announced at half two, I think, on deadline day. <coughs> he was a deadline day signing, exactly. A manager. A, Who else has done that? Waltz into our midfield. <laughs> yeah, he would, to be fair. So we we had he come in, and obviously they'd had the discussion over the weekend. You know, who would you have? And, and Donny Van der Beek was offered to to the three candidates. Mm. You know, and I think you know because Everton had obviously gone so far down the line with them and just gone to. And, Mm. So, so Van der Beek was on Lampard. Yeah, we'll get on the ball. And we'll... So we took him. Delhi was obviously offered to Everton. And Frank obviously thought I can get something out of him, and that may still happen. Yeah, played yeah. a big part in the Palace win. Did. So regardless yeah. of everything else he did, he, he's in the books. He was big when yeah. he need. We needed yeah. him to be big, and I still think we can get a tune out of him. There's a, you don't go from being one of the best young midfielders in world football, yeah. which he was at one time, to being. Not good enough to play for Everton football. Club, yeah, who barely who just survived up. relegation. Yeah, you, you can't. No, you can't the doesn't only work. thing in that is because he hasn't had a terrible injury. Yeah. So the only variable in that is himself. Is himself, yeah. So if he can get his attitude right and put the effort in and battle and scrap for us, the natural of flair and ability that he's got will we'll come, come back. Yeah. It'll come back. A Wobie's just shown that. Yeah. Run around like a lunatic. <clears throat> And you'll be and, <laughs> and the fans will get behind yeah. you. And then in them moments, have you got the quality? Well, if you've got the quality, but you're doing the other stuff, it will come through. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, and I'm hoping that Delhi does. But but my point was, he came in as well, and there was no room for the loan because of Mr. Elgar. It's not his fault, but you know, the owner allowed it. So now where we are, I'm looking and thinking, well, you've got Kevin Thelwell in there. They've been planning for this, and obviously it was difficult because they were probably going. If we get relegated, we'll go, we'll go this way. It. Yeah, uh, you know. And now, luckily, you know, good, good job. We didn't. We're looking at these type of plays, and we've got Tarkovsky. I mean, we haven't had a chat about Tarkovsky since you come. But are you pleased with that one? Yeah. No money, experience. You know, good age for a centre back. Don't forget, Jags plays is still playing. Yeah, and that's still yeah. having. And it's going to say he's still going so, into our team. So what? And I mean, David what it, Weir is still going into our team. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> Weir could play and. And coach, the club yeah. as well. Um, <laughs> you know, he's Brighton's new doff. If you, if you, if yeah. you're there. Um, so, what, what are your thoughts initially on Tarkov? Oh, he's a good signing. He's a good signing. Like you said, he's he's experienced enough. He's at an age where at first you look and you go, Ooh, "That's not young." But for the centre half, look at Thiago Silva. He's 37 and mm. won a Champions League season before last. So, he's a leader, I think. And you that's predicting Tarkov. He's winning the Champions League. No, I'm just saying in the next that. Five years. Mm, well, <laughs> we'll wait and see. We'll see where we are. Yeah. Um, no, he's a, he's a leader, isn't he? And you yeah, you can yeah. see almost. Even in, and it sounds mad to say, but even in just a little bit of video footage and picture footage of him, you see, you can see he's a natural sort of, he, well, he, he sort of screams, he just screams that sort of like, I'm, 
I'm, I'll tell you what to do. I'm the man, and, and we need that because we haven't got enough leaders at the football club. Mm. Um, obviously, we've got Yeri Meenan in there, and it, it's, it remains to be seen who the centre back partnerships will be. But I do firmly believe Tarkovsky will be number one, yeah. and whoever the number two is, obviously in a perfect world, it will be Yeri Meenan for the mm. for the the entirety of the season. But we know with Yeri Meenan's injury well, certainly last that, year, that's dead interesting. That because obviously <coughs> Meenan's our best defender. And, you know, I'm hoping Tarkovsky is going to be right up there as well. I mean, if you look at his numbers from last season, he was first yeah, and second and everything. In a bad Burnley team. Yeah, you know? exactly. But <coughs> what, what you just said there, that would be our partnership. Where does Ben Goffrey come into that then? I don't know. See, that's the interesting thing, isn't it? it, it I suppose there's still a conversation as to whether or not Frank would play free across there mm. and have two wide. Doesn't it look like backs? that's what he's lining up it to does, do? It does, it does, yeah, because you've got two big, strong leaders. You've got a young centre half you can learn from who's also mm-hmm. a leader and you've got two wide full backs that are quick enough to get forward and and get back and certainly in Patterson's case he, he's a quite an attacking minded mm-hmm. player. Um Michael Enko got his done his fair share of getting forward last mm-hmm. season as well. He wasn't massively involved obviously he scored the goal against Leicester but you could see that he was trying to get get mm-hmm. up as much as possible. So it might be that way. I think Frank's probably just wanting another option because of Yeri's injuries last season. Yeah. yeah. Um but I, I think it's so important to have a, a number one Centre back and then a two, three, four, five. So it's not just who's fit this week, who's going to play this week. It's well, if Tarkovsky's fit, he plays every week. And okay, if Mina's fit, he'll play every week. But given Mina's recent history, he's probably unlikely to be fit every week. So then it's Ben Goffrey that comes in there, mm. or it might be Mason Holgate or Michael Keane. Mason Holgate, by the way, you had a good, like, positive confidence end of the season, as did Michael Keane. Um, whose goal against Crystal Palace was unbelievable, absolutely yeah, yeah. unbelievable. Um, we're so well stuck though, <coughs> aren't we? In there because we've got we've got Holgate, Keane, Mina, Brantwaite, Godfrey, Godfrey, Tarkovsky, Tarkovsky, yeah. Reese Welsh, yeah. who's trained with the first team as well. <coughs> you're talking, There's options. You're talking seven centre backs, exactly, and you probably only need four. Yeah. So I, I, and. We've we've missed off our captain as well. He, he plays as the right centre yeah, back. Same as Colin, so we've yeah. got there's eight. Yeah. Realistically, now okay. Jared Plantwaite, I think, will go out and moan. Reese Welsh. It depends whether Frank wants him wants to coach him in yeah. the first part of the season. And then send him in January. Then yeah. send him. He's only young mm. centre back. It's difficult to go and get in the team at eighteen, yeah. nineteen. Yeah. So we might think, no, we'll keep him with Tarkovsky every day, developing on training ground. But you've got Mason Holgate and Michael Keane. <clears throat> now I know a lot of a lot of people will will message immediately and go sell a pair of them. It's e- it's easy. Like yeah, it, I'm not saying it. I'm not disagreeing. By the way, I'm just saying you're trying to get. Like, what do we do with them? Because you you like you just said there. I think Holgate actually finished the season really he well. Did. He did. You know, I think Keane would come up massively for us in that Palace game. Yeah. He's good when you sit on the edge. Great of the against Man United as well, and great against United. Yeah. yeah, so he has those, but then he has the moments where he's all he over the place, and you go, "Oh my god, I can't! I don't know what to do with him." So do you just do you think because obviously Yeri Mean has got he's into the final year of his contract, which means he walks out the door next summer for nothing. So do you think if if I don't know Villa Real come in for Yeri Mina at like nine or ten million quid, <clears> and just sell him? I think you'd have. To. Nine or ten million quid is, is heartbreaking numbers for somebody who's as good as Yeri Mina. But he's got a year. But yeah, I think you'd have to financially, and and in, and our past would tell you that uh, rejecting that would be a bad financial decision because mm. you know it's all well and good sitting here saying, but what if Yeri Mina plays thirty eight games next season? Sandy plays thirty eight games. He's boss by boss. Then it, it works. But how likely is that to happen? Mm. And if it doesn't happen, and he has another season like last season, or you know. Worse than last season in terms of his injuries, then we're looking going, why didn't we just take the 10 million quid? Now we're 10 million quid lighter and And the wages. wages. We're 10 million quid and the wages lighter. He's walked for free and we've hardly seen him this season anyway. Mm. So I think the club would take that money and you'd already got Tarkovsky who's coming in, as I said, and beat the number one. And then you're either partnering him with uh, Godfrey or see how Keane reacts, Holgate. There's there's options there, but it's whether. And and it's the same with with Holgate and Keane. It's all right sitting there saying sell them both, but. What if nobody wants them? Hmm. I'd sit in and sell most of the team. I'd drive <laughs> Andre Gomez to wherever he wants to go. But if nobody wants him, then what there's there's no there's no other option, is there? So I was going to come on to him because obviously we were talking about the midfield with Gibbs <coughs> White. Is that with Andre Gomez? I mean, what do we do with him? Because I I I've seen people saying yeah we get twelve million for him. I'm like, 
Who's paying twelve million for Andre Gomez? Everton, be, Everton be, probably <laughs> probably bid that against Arsenal. I'd be amazed if Everton <laughs> got three million quid for him. We just have to find someone or who's five just bad recruitment wise as us, don't but, we? But, no, he's not. No, yeah. I mean, I might. If we got more than five, I'd I be might shocked. be like massively wrong here, but I just don't see anybody who would look at Andre Gomez and go, "He's worth seven or eight million quid." Yeah, no, I think. I don't know. I think he'd look. He's got two years he'd, left on his He'd look all right in Italy, probably, because it's a slow league. Doesn't have to do much running. I just, he just doesn't do anything, does he? he doesn't mm. score. He can't defend. He doesn't assist. He's not quick on the ball. His decision making. He can pass a ball mm. if the opposition team give him all the time in the world. But it only takes one pass to go. Get on his toes, yeah. and he'll crumble. And then that's him. Then we saw the, the, game. the Palace game, wasn't he? He was. He was shocking. Wasn't yeah, he? absolutely awful. And yeah, I just. I'd, I'd literally, I'd get in my car now and drive him to one the one airport. One but yeah. I'd, again, it's it's difficult. Obviously, there's that's what agents are for, and people within the club to say, look at him, yeah, he's, course, yeah. he's boss, he's great on the ball, he's got lovely hair, lovely beard. Look, boss on the photos, by the way, on the mm. calendars oh, and stuff, really looks great. Be, yeah. So that's a selling point for for clubs, and if he looks good on the pictures, <laughs> but he'd probably shoot just, someone like Ben Fico, wouldn't he? Yeah, he's a slower ball, league, a bit with, slower, yeah. get on the ball. Isn't it bam, you know, he's just there to keep it moving yeah. and have got other people around him. It, it, and it's not the emphasis isn't see the Premier League, so we're seeing this week, um Samari, who yeah. I think a, is a good footballer. Going out on come from really. Lille and Leicester are like <laughs> uh, get you out on loan mm-hmm. mate, because he yeah, he, ha- he hasn't been able to hit the ground do really, what yeah. Brendan Rodgers wanted them to do at Leicester. We've seen other players, you know, Liverpool, Naby Keita was going to rule the world. Now, okay, he's done all, he's, he's done okay for them, really, but 60 million at nah, the time. I think that shot that he is in the no, final still, still no, rising no. now. I know, but what I'm saying is he's done all right. No, he's, he hasn't, he's not he's got that not, price tag. No, no, no not at all. He, he looks like a, a 15, 18 yeah. million pound midfielder. Others have come in and gone out the door because it's just this league is really difficult to yeah. play in. The midfield, they're on you. Yeah, it's pressing the power, the pace, the injury didn't help Gomez as well. Mm. Not having Garner yeah. didn't help Gomez. It, it, it is as well. He's a he's a luxury player. That's not very luxury, isn't he? Really, he didn't really bring many luxuries. But with next to Garner, he was able to be that nice, you know, good with the ball at his feet, mm. can pass a ball. Mm. When people are on him, he's relatively strong, strong he? Yeah. so he can hold people off. But if you've not got that runner next to him, and he hasn't because the core is not the same type of player as Garner was. No. So he hasn't got that natural player who's doing all the, the running rather than the dirty work around him. Mm. It then puts more emphasis on him doing a bit of that, and he, he can't do any of it. He's not quick enough. He's mm. not agile enough. He's, his decision-making isn't... You see him sometimes on the ball, and he's dawdling, and he loses the ball, and he's thinking... He thinks he's got too much too more time than he's actually got here and then pe- mm. players get onto that uh, opposition teams that have been looking at team sheets coming to Goodison thinking Gomez is in that midfield just get on him yeah. just pressure him Don't you don't need to be a billion footballer just run at him chase him because he'll lose the ball he'll, mm. he, he'll think he's got too much time on it so he's one of many that I would I would sell tomorrow but this is what happens when you build a squad full of players that ultimately end up with very little value and not good enough as is teams look at them and go well why do we I'll get into some comments again though, but <laughs> it is is Everton's issue, because I was thinking about this yesterday, um, is Everton's issue <coughs> that there's no structure, there's been no structured buying. And what I mean by that is, I, I was looking, I was thinking about the midfield yesterday, and I was like, so our midfielders, so we've got like John Philippe Gabamon. <laughs> now, okay. I, you see, people laugh at John Philippe Gabamon, or we'll go, he's crap, or whatever, right? This fella come. He was very good. <laughs> he might Germany. be the unluckiest fella. The I've ever unlucky seen. is what I'd say because he was very good in France yeah. and very good in Germany. Yeah. And if he wouldn't have got injured, I think he'd have been good yeah. for Everton. He's exactly what Everton need. In fact, if you could say to me now he'll be fit all season, I'd still give him a go yeah. and just try to get you know when it in, in and out in and I work on him. But uh, just for the you know humour me, <laughs> John Philippe Cabaman, Tom Davies, Abdelaide Corey, Alan, yeah, Delhi. Alex Awobi, Andre oh, Gomez. Gomez. So there's seven straight off the bat. And then you've got obviously Tyler on Yango. Yeah. Although I think I think he's gonna go out on loan, which would be good for his development. Mm. But we've got seven midfielders. Let's pull the on Yango back out for a sec. The seven midfield players there. And yet we're all sat here going, We need we two. Need, we need two midfield players. Yeah. Right? So <laughs> when you look at that, okay, so say we got Morgan Gibbs White. And we could get Andre Gomez <coughs> on the door. 
so we've still got seven yeah. but we've got now a kid who's quite mobile offers a goal threat can work around sound we still haven't got someone who's going to sit in front of the back four because mm. Alan doesn't really want to do it because no. he likes to run around mm. and, and be the like terrier. a Rottweiler yeah the core he doesn't want to do it and it's, he's, it's, he can but it's not his game no it's not his and game he needs to be more at the breaking top. exactly into the, front. the box Tom Davis can he can do he's a played version, his best football doing it doing it he's he done has, it well at Anfield he has, when he beat them is he still is, is he still is he a number one for you no no well, exactly it, he's a squad player can I, can I ask you something ask away do you think he'd have been a number one towards the back end of last season had he have not been injured absolutely absolutely because we didn't have anybody else mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean that he's good enough that no no of play, course of course yeah. and I like Tom Davis I think he's a good squad player I think you need those kind of people yeah. in your squad who can, can come in and do a job and do a job yeah. for you and think I think you do need that I think. Yeah, you and do. especially Everton Football Club we ain't we can't have nine subs who are amazing no. We can't. We just. We simply can't. We can't barely have nine subs exactly. <laughs> without having we have four, four goalkeepers. Goalkeepers <laughs> on the bench. Yeah. So therefore, we do. We do need a Tom Davis yeah, type. But absolutely. again, he still ain't number one. Number one. Sure, no. to go in. Alex Awobi. Is he a wing back now? Is he? This could be good. Go on the flash. Oh oh. There he is. Alex Awobi. Is he a wing back? Is he a number ten? Is he a number eight? Frank Lampard likes him. He finished the season really strong. Okay, go and try and get your positioning. Delhi. Like I just said to you before, could come good and we could all mm. be going. Oh, what a footballer we've got here! Could be played off the strike. Don't forget, well. he gets he, he scored goals for space. And that, yeah, that's, mostly at Goodison. That yeah, against Everton. But that's the thing for me is that he's got a goal in him. Yeah, and we ain't got too many players no. that have got a goal no. in him. So then you look at Alan and you go, <laughs> I'd sell him. Yeah, I'd I sell like him. him. I think he's been decent for Everton. I do, but I'd, take I'd sell the money. him. Again, he's he's just not. It's not, it's not this league. It's just need. this. Yeah, it's not what we need now. So we have got an issue in there, and we, we st- Mo Camera I want to <coughs> from Salzburg. I want him today. Yeah, I want him now. <laughs> and sign him, you know, one of those Sangari, someone like that. Who you go, there, he's in. He's yeah. in every week. He plays, there you go. and then you play him with him, and you play him with him. Yeah. And the big thing for me, and he, he, he it doesn't even look like it's gonna happen, but please, this season, please play three in midfield, please. Yeah, because uh, we ain't got. Do you know what? I think that's what Dunga Bamin in at Wolves. He come back, he got fit, it. and Benitez played him in a two. And I, with it who, might be the who, w- did he, who did he play with him in a two with? No, no, Alan. Alan he's the yeah. most oh, yeah. ill-disciplined yeah. midfielder to play in. I a just two. remember being in the mall and you looking, thinking, "What am I watching here? This is the well." He just looked shocking. lost, and yet he when he came lost. on a hull and played in the middle of midfield with he three, right, yeah. he was he got we got older the game then when Gabamon was mm-hmm. on, and he got his foot on it a little bit, and that was hull, and it was a league down and all that, but. We can't play with the two. No. We just can't. No it doesn't matter who the two any is, of them we can't two play. That you, we no, they're just not good named. enough. There's not, they're not good enough. Do it. And people want Conor Gallagher, and that's great. He couldn't play in the two. No, we couldn't, because three. we haven't got the mobile exactly. next to Exactly, so oh, no. that's a big thing for me. When you look, there's no structure. And that, our buying has led us to have a collection of footballers <laughs> that are all different any types. Structure, yeah. Yeah. Without any structure. Mm. That's because we've both had different managers, different directors of football, different system. He's come in and done this way, then he's got sacked, and then you've got this group of players and other managers come in and, well, I want to do it a different way. Well, then players don't suit that different way, but they're still here on three, four-year contracts on stupid money a week, so mm. they linger, they stick around, and that's what happens when you don't have an infrastructure at the club and you don't employ managers or directors of football to say, this is how we do it. Mm. Well, a director of football comes in and creates that, and then if the manager gets sacked, you bring a manager in and say, this is how we do it you adapt to that or you bring somebody in that's already adapt, well adapted to that and you bring players in that suit the football club and obviously a manager will have his choices of one or two players but mm. you don't just let a manager bring five players in sack him six months a year later and then those players are void effectively because the next manager isn't going to play the same way or the same system mm. or the same style that's how you end up with a squad of players who are so mismatched and just yeah. like I mean we've got players from what Koeman's era Silva um, Benitez Moyes Moyes Martin, Martinez Allardyce, Ancelotti Allardyce, Allard- has Allardyce has gone now? Yeah Allardyce has just gone barely just gone, yeah. just But gone. still players who played under him are still there Exactly So it, it, it's, it's it's mad yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely and, and, and what have those managers got in common? Nothing They're mm. all different managers with different stars <laughs> and different systems Ancelotti loved the Alan and the Corey with Hammers in there uh, Ever- Alan wouldn't be an Everton player without Ancelotti. No, of course. Well, Hammers, wouldn't Hammers would never have been an Everton mm. player without Ancelotti. The Corey would because he was trying to get the, co- the Corey had been under Silva, yeah. But it is what it is, isn't it? We've, <coughs> we've got it. That's what I'm saying. We've almost got a goal. Okay, 
it's now. Yeah. Now's the slate is clean. Let's see what these fellas can do. And hopefully, everything you've just said about a structure, hopefully Kevin Felwell and, and with, with Frank Lampard can start to mm. try to put that structure in place. Dave Witt says thoughts on Van der Boomen, who was at, uh, at Toulouse, I think, isn't he? Just had a good season in the second division. He's had, I don't know much about him. He had 20... 20 goal contributions I think get him in <laughs> yeah. he got 12 goals in in 30 odd league games and then scored in cups and I'm sure he had something like 10 assists or something as well or yeah. 20 assists I think he might have had he takes the set pieces as well uh, my only issue Dave with, with Van der Boomen is he reminds me a little bit of Morgan Schneider, a better version. Oh. No, 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 a better version. He's Dutch. He's not French. So. <laughs> well, how does? What, where but has he got just, the same haircut or something? Like the way he, just the way he is on the ball and stuff. Yeah. He's but he's like not. These, he? He's not a great tackler. But he oh. is good. His, his deliveries are fabulous. Well, that's fine. But then you need a great tackler three, three, next to him. Six foot three. That's so what you do. Big. Yeah. But yeah, I think you need a great that, and that, that's fine if you bring a midfielder and he's got this. You know these attributes, this attribute, that, but not that because then you bring somebody else in that's got that, and then you make the mm. midfield. But you don't bring in two players that is it, it, the Cumin is, is the biggest example of it. Bringing in forty-two number tens and playing Dominic no, Calvert Lewin right wing. That's where it went wrong. We had we we were effectively naught. Yeah. When then two got the money, yeah, yeah. Um, we were at naught with FFP because mm. we that's we haven't been able to spend mm. for years. So we were the money kept the television money kept us afloat. We ever never brought money in then either, which is shocking. But hey ho, <coughs> we were effectively at zero then. Yeah. And yet, what we didn't do was we didn't plan the structure. Steve Walsh wasn't a director of football. No, he was a scout. He was a chief scout and a part-time first team coach, and he was very good at both of those yeah. things. But he wasn't a director of football. Yeah. So it's much more than just signing Monty, players. And Monty wanted to come. We don't know whether Monty would have worked out. Yeah. We don't know. Mashiri tried to get Brands, and Brands didn't want to come at that time either. So his third choice was Walsh, Steve Walsh, because obviously Kante, Vardy, they just won the Mahrez, league. Blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. But Cumin didn't want him. And the other problem we had was that Cumin was in before Walsh was in. Yeah. So so it was already had a thing, and, and Everton should have really pulled the plug on the Cumin thing before it started. Mm. He didn't really want to come here. It was the money. It was a step to Barcelona. We had to go out to him, his villa in Spain, to do the unveiling because he, he didn't want to fly back. There was alarm bells ringing. Nonsense. So Everton should have just gone, actually, mate, we're withdrawing the contract yeah. offer and we're going after this fella yeah. or this fella. But because it was Ronald Koeman and Michelle the wanted the name, yeah. but the recruitment was... The first season, I kind of got it. Ashley Williams, we needed the St. John Stones had gone. Yeah. We need, Williams had always done all right at Swansea. Swansea done yeah. really good for Wales, so you went... All right, ten million. Mm-hmm. All right, Pickford. Second oh. season, Pickford. Was he second mm-hmm. season? Oh yeah, because it was Stecklenburg. Yannick yeah, Balassi, yeah. who had always done well against us, thought, "All right, yeah, we'll see. We've got Lukaku. He's powerful and pacey. We did try to get the kid that went to Southampton, Gabby, Gabby Adini. Gabby Adini. Yeah, tried yeah. to get him as another striker at the end. That probably would have helped. And then we tried to get him a year later as well. But Garner. Of course, he was fabulous. Mm. So there was some decent recruitment Recruit- in year yeah. one. In year two, <laughs> they just- <laughs> whatever. They just- Do- and now Everton moved really quick. Don't forget, we had yeah. Classen, yeah, all three, Jordan day, Pickford, really. and um, who was the third one? Michael Keane. Michael Keane, all within <clears throat> a day. A day, yeah. In June, all done. Brilliant. I remember that day. Off we go. Classen, I'd watched. I'd watched them in the final against United, and was like. I'm not convinced yeah. because he, he didn't really get a kick. There was others in that final. I mean, the lit was unbelievable. Yeah. Seventeen. There was um, the other kid Sanchez yeah. who Everton looked at, and he was interested in coming, and we didn't get him. He went to Spurs, and he wasn't amazing for Spurs. Davison Davison Sanchez, Sanchez, but, he was all right. that, yeah. but that team had Casper Dolberg in. Mm-hmm. He was another one we were linked with. We should have gone and got these kind of players, but we just spunked it with no. Real thought, Plan, yeah. Classic, Classen, Rooney, Rooney yeah. fucking Sigurdsson, you know, no striker. Yeah. But, but Mike, you know what? Again, there's a lot said about Michael Keane, but he was 24. United wanted him. Like United were big for him. He was just broke into the England team, and he was decent for Burnley. And I was like, yeah, it makes sense. Mm. But I didn't watch him every week. Yeah. So when I seen him, he was now good. you do. <laughs> 
what it is with Michael Keane, I, it's not ability. No, it's his confidence. It's, it's his the head. thing that it's either his concentration or his confidence. Yeah. I've never seen, I've said it before, when he loses his confidence. Oh, he's got, he's, you, just, yeah. you may as well just go, Michael, come and see. He is the most confidence based player I've I think never, I've ever witnessed. But in, in a game, life. no. He yeah. starts off making a mistake, you just see him go, boom, and that, it's gone. It was so evident at Spurs, at White Hart Lane last season. The I think goal, he turned around to the away fans, he just seen his face and someone went, he's gone. Yeah. He's gone. Later, right? Two minutes later, he's made a mistake. So, <coughs> we do need to be better at what we do. Um, yeah, everything that we do. Everything we do. Got a structure in place, it's not hard. Look at all of these Other clubs that have got it. structures Other and they're doing well. Do. All right, Leicester had a bit of a thingy season last season, but... Yeah, but in general... Would yeah, you take a Premier League and an FA Cup in five years? Yeah, 100%. And you'd never see me again. a couple of midfield... Exactly. Uh, a couple of mid-table places, absolutely. Exactly. Andy Walker says, uh, Morgan Gibbs-White sounds like a toothpaste. Hmm. Gibbs-White. Does it Gibbs White? Yeah. It sounds more like a plastering company, bit, I think. It? It's, it's the, the white, white bit, yeah. Is this I the think thing? More of a plastering company. Um, Andy Agoli says uh, the Dennis news has gone real quiet. What's mm-hmm. happened? Well, I don't think. Uh, among your Dennis, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> no, that's what I mean. I don't think it was ever. I don't think there was ever any It was news. ever far along, mate. It, it was, was just, just links yeah. and people going ever, and they're interested in this. And but you've got to be thinking with the media. Is it's such an? It's like when we had Ancelotti. And Twitter. I've seen yeah. all of these like. Some of these IT and I'm not, you know, the different ones you yeah. jump on, just going, he's here, but that's because they're feeding off the news. But yeah. the news is wrong. Yeah, don't forget, Emmanuel Dennis' his agent will be feeding journalists. Yeah, of course he will. Course so course people he will. will report it, and Twitter accounts will report it because it's in the news. It's so in they the should news, be yeah. reporting it. We've probably, we'll have yeah. reported it. Well, those journalists always overhype it. So those journalists will go, he's in talks and he's he's met and he's agreed this and all. And it's like, he hasn't, his agent's just going, Oh, Everton are interested yeah. in him, you know, and he wants to move and he's and all that. So sometimes <coughs> you can read it and you go, Oh, they must be quite close yeah. this move. I've done it with, with other not with our club because we kinda know where we are with what yeah. we're doing, but with other clubs you go, Oh, they getting him. Yeah. And then the next day he's he's gone someone and you go, yeah. I thought he was going to there yeah. or I thought he was going there. Mm-hmm. So it is one of them. Look at the Gabriel stuff. The centre half. We had we were oh, linked with him for singer. No yeah, yeah. the centre half, linked with him for 325 years and then rocks up at the end. COVID hours. stopped that though. That was done. COVID. COVID. Good old COVID. Yeah. Eh? Terry McAllister says we're just normal men. We're just innocent men. Some of us are innocent, Terry. Some of us are rooting through draws. Oh, looking no, for I, mean, I don't, know I don't really know why. Um, <coughs> James Perry says with it being a World Cup season alongside the fact we have little money to spend do you think we will have to give more opportunities to some of our academy players this season? <laughs> If so, which you, which place you think will potentially feature for us? We may do. We may do. Um, Five subs as well, don't forget. We do, and you'll see a lot of them on the bench. I'm sure you'll mm. see more of it. It, it. it all depends on who goes out on loan and yeah, who doesn't, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? Because we could sit here now and go, well, Lewis Dobbin will get loads more game time. But Lewis Dobbin might get a good loan come the end of the window and that might be considered. Reese Welsh, Jared Branthway, the same. He's likely to go out on loan. So it depends where we are come the end of the transfer window and who's still here and who isn't mm. still here at the end of the day but they will feature through the point of that we have not they featured last season on benches and mm. you know giving but debuts and stuff like that what do you think like of Dobbin because I know there's a <coughs> couple of I know there's a couple of um, teams sniffing around them to take them on yeah. what would you do with them would you, would you keep them with us and have them off the bench this season because it's, it's, it's five subs mm. or would you say you know, you know what I want to see him playing a season in League One or, or even half a season so maybe like we said before with Reese Welsh maybe Everton will look at him up to January mm. and go he's not quite See, ready yeah. get him on loan or whatever what, what, what do you think you do I don't him? know it's mad isn't it because we had he had all of this talk about whether or not he'd sign a new contract whilst he was playing played at Chelsea come off the bench a number mm. of times and then Lampard comes in he signs a new contract and did he come on since then has he played for Everton since then? I don't think he has, has he? Come on, has he come off he, the bench? Did he come on at the end of the season? He didn't even play at Arsenal. No, he? he didn't. He didn't play at Arsenal. Yeah. Played, I'd have started them at Arsenal. He signed a new contract yeah. under the thing that he'd be getting more game time and then never played. But that I leads you to think is they've been a conversation with Lampard is to say, let us get through this because yeah. we're in a absolute yeah. awful situation. Same, same a bit with same with Patterson. Mm. Probably let me get through this with these, and the next season into the summer, mm. well, you get your opportunity. He's gonna play in America, isn't he? Obviously, Dobbin. I would hope so. Yeah, he, he will. He'll get games in America or, or minutes in America. Because um, I don't think well, Anthony Gordon won't be playing in America. Cause no, because he's there still. No, he's, he's there unless he just gets a different <laughs> flight. But he hasn't trained. No. Yeah. Uh, what I'm really gutted <laughs> about is I don't think Pat's is gonna play because because mm, of the internationals. He's, yeah, he's at the time. I yeah. mean, if I was him. See, this is what it, you'd want to play. I'd be, I'd have been. I haven't, I haven't confirmed whether he's back yet, but he only 
played a few games for Scotland about three weeks ago, yeah. but if I was him, Michalenko cut his shot. Yeah. I'd yeah, have been literally. back. I'd have been back because I'd have wanted to train um, Evan to play in an inter squad game on, at the weekend and then they go off to America. If I was him, I'd want to be in that. Now, he might very well go to America with Evan. He probably will, to be honest, mm. and train all week and then he'll. So we, but for him, he's got to start getting game time, yeah. hasn't he? Yeah. To absolutely. establish it. So. Um, Lawson just says afternoon really think Delhi is going to have a boss season perfect player to play off Dom possibly yeah um, Tom says without a doubt he improves us this is Gibbs White we're desperate for him midfield to carry the ball and chip him with goals it actually blew my mind he's only 22 seems to have been around for ages well he made his Wolves debut at 16 didn't he mm-hmm. so so he has um, been around for ages exactly uh, Carl says uh, <laughs> afternoon the boys uh, why do you think we get such little money for our youngsters Yet other clubs seem to command big fees. Broadhead scored 10 in 20 appearances. Sims had a 1 in 3. Yep, yeah, we'd be lucky if both got us a million pounds, but Wolves won 25 million for Gibbs White. Well, Broadhead's a lot older than Gibbs White, isn't he? He's, what, 24 now? So, I, d- I don't know, really. We are absolutely criminally bad at selling our young players for anything more than a pack of a crisp. Especially when you've got clubs that are selling theirs. Them lot are great at doing it, bringing players in. The player does nothing and then they sell them for ridiculous amounts of money. Maybe it's because they've got that name of played for this club or played for that club or was on the bench in the Champions League quarter final game or something like that. I, I don't know, but have we ever really been good at moving youngsters on for profit? Oh. Other than obviously you big hitters like Wayne Rooney well the ones the, only the ones who've been in the first team because exactly. people only like, the special like Anthony, Rob, uh, Anthony Robinson <coughs> who's obviously a Premier League left back now mm. he only went for like one and a half million there you go and stuff like that so we haven't we've never commanded like fees for players who who are getting you know no one's coming in for like Lewis Warrington and gone we'll give you nine million you know which is what Liverpool mm. have done that's not having a go with Lewis Warrington I'm just trying to think of someone yeah, who, who examples, someone might yeah. come in for no one's kind of come in for Isaac Price right now and go yeah. we'll give you 10 million or we'll give you 7 million for Isaac Price are they but other clubs seem the it. thing is Morgan Gibbs White has had the season different because he's played in the Premier League scored yeah. goals he's yeah. also played in the Premier League so it is difficult not loads of clubs do can command that money though can they I mean maybe it is a club thing then it's a they've played for this well, you club get the they've worked under get this the manager Liverpool tax. Exactly, yeah. that's why they <laughs> Liverpool tax is ridiculous some of the money well, the it. money they sell some of their young players unbelievable what, what did Solanke go for 20 million oh uh, Jordan God. I 15 Ted was saying yesterday Ryan like, Brewster didn't he go for 20 Ryan or 25 Brewster went for 20 million quid done nothing and Nico Williams has yeah, gone for 16 it, million yeah. or something so. although he yeah, does Oh yeah, maybe oh, I maybe, yeah, just maybe. that good enough. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. It could be that actually. Um Richie says, Hi fellas, you're a little concerned that we aren't making signings and getting the business done before we go to the US. Um by the way, I'm having serious issues wearing that Richie T shirt as good as it is. Um <coughs> I No, I think they are trying to uh, Everton are trying to get players in before they go to America next week. That I know. Can they do it? It's a race against time, isn't it? But the, the, <laughs> they want a couple. On it's a good song, isn't it? It is. <laughs> they want a couple, so we'll see. Uh, Sterling to Chelsea. This is Kelly. Sterling to Chelsea is pretty interesting. I can still see them slipping out the top four this season. Wow. That's because Tottenham are signing every single player on the planet. Mm-hmm. So it I will know, be... Uh... I know we're supposed to be taking cast off from the big six, but is there any players that could genuinely be of use to us? Loftus-Cheek and Zinchenko. Not Loftus-Cheek. Zinchenko, I'd have all day. I don't... I don't I, I think I'd have him as a player. I don't. I wouldn't pay the money that they want for him. Twenty five. Not million. an art. Yeah, not an art. I just don't know. I just think we just we talk about needing goals, and I just don't think he. I don't know. He's a good. Listen, he he come in and he would probably technically be the best he player at the football club. Player. So there's that, but I just, I don't know. But who are we getting? Who's gonna weigh in with the goals then? <clears throat> well, that's the question, isn't it? Because when you that's look around, question. anyone who scores goals costs money. Exactly, exactly. So that's it is different. He's a great, he's a great player. I just think it is that know. hard. But in a, in, a, in an ideal world, if we were back with Kuma, where we had not yeah, great, go out and hmm. sign him. But I just, I just don't know if I don't know. Yeah. It's uh, we need, we need <coughs> someone else. There's players in those goals. clubs that we should be going for, but they don't have to be cast off players. Hmm. There's players, younger players. Going, how many players have Chelsea got now? That 
Raheem Sterling is going to bounce out the squad. Mm. Pulisic. Ziyech, Pulisic. Ziyech's not coming here, though. But Pulisic, test the water, don't Pulisic, you? Pulisic. Pulisic. Test the water, mm. come, to, come to Everton, with, Everton on might. loan for the, with the obligation to buy, exactly. Might but they're not cast off, Raddy. You're not looking no, at no, players no. that you're not, dare I say, Ross Barkley, for example, who you're not looking at those that you're but looking you at. Would you have Ross Barkley? A lot of chat about Barkley <coughs> today. Would, he, would Ross Barkley get in the Everton team? Probably yes. Would <laughs> Ross Barkley go out to town every weekend and make an idiot of himself? Probably yes. Um, I don't know. I, that just screams. Wow, we've got Ross Barkley back. Wow, what's he done since he's left? No. Nothing really. Do you no know what the big thing is about Ross Barkley for me? Was the Villa loan. The Villa loan, I sort of looked and I thought, let's let's see how this goes. Let's see if at the end of it they're First dying to bring him in. First fantastic. part was great. I remember him against Liverpool in the seven twos, brilliant. But then come the end of it, it was like they were a bit like, nah. Mm. And then that was when I thought, mm, you're not good enough for Villa. Are you really good enough for Everton? But then we had last season, and now, now he's more, now, now yeah, he's more now, than good enough for Everton. Now yeah. I don't, I, I don't know. I just, uh, it, I just think it's got. Give him two weeks and then everyone will eat him. <laughs> Written all over it, to be honest. I think that's most of our players. <laughs> well, exactly. Uh, Tony Manley says, afternoon, Baz and Cam. Uh, glad the absolute Mel Johnson has gone. He'll only be replaced with another horrible Tory goblin. Okay. I thought he meant I was thinking. From Evans for about 20 years what? ago then. Oh, Andy you Johnson, you're Andy thinking. Johnson. Uh, Martin <laughs> says, any dress code for tomorrow night shindig? Accommodation store. So. One, one tens and trackies. Yeah, no. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah, just don't come in a full kit. <laughs> dead easy dead easy Julian says hi lads what do you make of Alan Myers' comments last night that he's uh, the well known US billionaire is interested well I hope he's right who is the well known US I hope, billionaire I hope he's right um, a Elon Musk Tesla yeah, FC could be Tesla FC um, the Tesla Tesla Terra though mm. I'm, I hope it's Elon Musk now you know I'm getting myself excited no, no. it depends who it is there's a lot of well known American billionaires that yeah yeah you wouldn't want anywhere near Evan. Exactly. Uh, Bobby says, uh, will Cam be Ned's designated adult chaperone so the American Child Services Agency regulations are satisfied? <laughs> yeah, gonna have Cam's going to gonna have to. We're getting Ned one of those things, you know, like, you know, where you wear, like, the back, rains. back the rain, the rain's got the rain. <coughs> so uh, Ned can't wander off. He wants much. to take me to a shot where alligators run around the floor. Yeah, it's okay. As if I'm not the clumsiest person in the world. That's you show me a video and the alligator is just there. Yeah, as if it's there a dog it's on chat, the street. Yeah. And he's made up. Paul says, Baz, even if you knock two thirds off his numbers, um, it's still better than all of our How scary is that? Absolutely. Uh, Sam Whitlock says, Is Alan back in training yet? Um, I've not seen any. So it's only Moon, any? It's only Moon, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know why he's got extra time off given he didn't play for I know he had an operation. Actually, he had the operation. He had an operation, he? yeah. So. Hernia. So. Maybe they give him a bit of time because he's not fit. Um, Gaz says, oh, hi, Premier Night Eve. Uh, I never realised <laughs> when I asked for Yaya Ding Dong a few weeks ago, I'd be starting the movement. Ned is under pressure. He knows you. Ned's going to smash it? it. I was playing it, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Are you playing classic. Sam Fender? No, it didn't sound very good, Yaya yeah, yeah, Ding Dong, though, I must say. It will, it'll but sound amazing because everyone will sing it. Along, then I'll just have to Are you playing Kate Bush? I might do, yeah. I'm saying a lot of might to you. you are, know, yeah. I'm not uh, saying well, a lot I'll of I'll tidy it up with him. Steve Kelly says, all right, let's hope you both well. Looking forward to the, I mean, he's called it the Prey tonight, but Steve, come on. The <laughs> Premier Night. If uh, if Yeri Mina is fit opening day of the season, is he in your starting 11? Yes. Uh, number six, please, Everton. Yes. And thoughts on Ross Barkley? I'm abstaining. No. I'm abstaining. <laughs> I'm abstaining. Um, <laughs> Would he look good in the kit? He put a picture of himself he will the other look, day. He will look. And it looked so, his face looked so photoshopped. But I don't know why he would Photoshop his face. I just remember. I don't think he can Photoshop. Nah, I just remember looking at his face, and he he must have been Is like. He, he might have put ninety. He looked like he was constipated. Uh, he's been. He's he been was to, training, but he he's just been looked. To Turkey and had his teeth and stuff done, and he. Okay. He got his teeth done years ago. Um, Tom says, "Can you see Lewis Warrington featuring much?" No, no. I think he'll go on loan because I think Everton have, might have a long term plan for him, and therefore that may involve. The th- Be careful what you say, Baz. Everton with a long term plan. Well, they've got. Listen, we have got. A, we've got to give Kevin Thelwell some. No, we are. He seems to be changing. If we start jumping on him as well, then we so I've noticed well as well. He gone. seems to be changing little things that you wouldn't. I read something the other day about chefs and stuff and yeah, nutrition yeah, yeah. and stuff changing, yeah. which is good because. Mm. Yeah, of course. You know me. If there's food involved, I'm reading about it. But that's good because it's not just the obvious. Oh. No, the training's changed, games, or it's different. Yeah, but you worry that why they haven't done it in the past. But anyway, well, we can only go with what's what. 
Um, Maybe because the people in the past weren't good enough for the job. Or weren't Maybe. As we said with Steve Walsh, being, yeah, a, yeah. being a director of football isn't just, oh, I want to get this player, I want to get that player. There's much more that. Mm-hmm. You are effectively in charge of the football club, yeah. how the football club runs. You've the football be side of things anyway. Of You've got to be allowed of it. Um, Julian says, I haven't <laughs> worked with him at Chelsea. What do you think Frank's opinion of Ross Barkley is? Is there any chance he could rejoin Everton? There's always a chance, because especially if Chelsea are giving away for nothing, yeah. there's always a chance, isn't it? Especially given our, the way we are. Uh, Paz says, I think a good number six unlocks the goal and attack and threat of the Corey, Allen, Awobi, etc. Uh, David Gilbert says, Van der Boom and 12 goals, 21 assists it was. 21 assists? Mate, his, honest, his dead ball stuff is fantastic, honestly. You've put me off with the Snadlin. Uh, oh, comment to be honest, but as soon that. as you said he reminds me of Snadlin, I was out. That was 21,000 assists, <laughs> and I'm out. <laughs> that was it. I'm out. He's not French, though. So that's where the, you know, Van der Boomen. Van, Van der Boomen! <laughs> it does sound good. It sounds it good. It does sound He's good. He's 26, six foot three. The headlines would be great as well. Exactly. Uh, Phil Williams <laughs> says, would you take Mitchie Batchuay? No. No. Uh, Michael says, if Mina plays 25 games this season, do we give him a contract extension? Yeah. Well, he, but otherwise he'd walk for free, wouldn't yeah. he? So. Uh, name three, Doesn't that decision have to be made before then? The Surely. Bit. The Mina situation. It'd have to be, sorted. It'd have to be yeah, sorted yeah, before yeah. the season, wouldn't it? Uh, Tom says, have you seen the Australian press confirming it's us for the tournament in November? I haven't seen it, but I, Everton were very close to signing the contract yesterday, I was told, so it doesn't surprise me. Um, name three number sixes we should go for. Lucas Duart at... Saint Etienne is one. Fafana, Monaco, two. Um, Kuadia at Borussia Mönchengladbach, three. They just have to. Who? I'd say Mo Kamara. Mo Kamara, four. Ibrahima, Sangari, five. There's five for you. Straight <laughs> off. All under 25 million. There you go. Good ages. Uh, and all, yeah, all under 20. Three, I think. No, Sangari. Yeah, 20. Yeah, 24, all under 24, 24. definitely. Uh, Gallagher and Brozia, viable. Too much money. I honestly don't know. If loans, maybe. Um, does Brozier rem- any? Does Brozier remind anyone of Morales, or is it just me? No. In what way? He doesn't look anything like Morales. No. I've seen a picture of Morales. The, the way he though, he's, 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 he's a bit big. I don't know. He's he's just signed <laughs> for his nine hundred club. I wonder what he's doing. I hope he doesn't have <laughs> t-shirts and he wants to take penalties off people and fight with them. I hope that isn't. Oh, he's good on his day, though, isn't he? Uh, Morales, he's yeah, good he's for a bit. He's good for. He's he playing the wrong position, mate. Yeah. He's played in the wrong position. Um, <coughs> Joe, yeah, decent. Decent. That's all I'll say. <laughs> um, anyone else I'll gutted? We won't get one. any more Hyde, Duncan Ferguson from Everton Football Club here videos. We might. just might be rephrased. Might just be Hyde, Duncan Ferguson here. You never know. Although, he probably just, will just want to get on with what he's getting on with. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine. I Being imagine. a manager. Making um, a success of himself. Solo says Suarez is a free agent. Is he, yeah? Great. There you go. Um, Paul he, Rasmussen says Barkley is better than Ali. Don't know about that. Don't know. Don't know about that. Um, Ross, Ross Barkley. Is that it? Six. Did he six? Six games. Did he, there was no starts either. Mm. Was there no starts? Were they How all off the bench? So. No. How many? Was uh, did yeah, Delhi play? How many did Delhi play? Well, he played. How many did he played start? Fair, I don't know how many he started. Yeah. Because he only st- mm-hmm. well, one for us definitely. Yeah. So we'll see. Less than we forget that game. Absolutely. Napoli. Absolutely. <laughs> Can we stop playing final games of the season? By the way, that's two of the in the last two years. The final game of the season has been absolutely pointless, and we've had five put past us. Can we just stop playing the last so game what, of the, the season? Thirty-eight games. To <coughs> yeah, just don't playing. play it. Just don't play it. Yeah. Take a three 0 Yeah, just take the three. Be take the three nil. Be better, be better, than, better than, than the last yeah, two yeah. years. Yeah. Just, just say we're, we're not. at home to Bournemouth this year. Finally, it, it, last time we were at home to Bournemouth, they beat us three one. Beat three <laughs> one. <laughs> so Josh King scored. Yeah. We signed him. He never scored. He come back from Watford and scored an attack. Yeah. So just stop playing final yeah, games of the it. season. We're done. I'm done. We're done. Right. Thanks very much for joining us. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Check out Cam on the Mighty Blues as well. And if you want to join uh, Toffee TV Premier. The link is in the description and the QR code is on the screen now. Have a good day. See you later.